My name is Stephen Rafferty, and you're watching These Are Questions. This is the interview show where I ask people questions about things, life, and such not. Today's guest is a four-time, 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 four-time Emmy Award-winning television host, successful podcaster, and entrepreneur. He is the one, the only, CBV, Chris Van Fleet. Chris, welcome to These Are Questions. Stephen, thank you so much for having me on. Thank you for inviting me back to Florida, even if it is just virtually. Hey, virtual Florida is where it's at. Virtual Florida is a lot warmer than most other places in the U.S. right now. Probably mm -hmm. not. I'm in California, fairly warm here, just not today. A little cool and damp and rainy, which, you know, never rains in California. So it's, it's nice to be there with you. I'm glad. I'm glad. One of the, what are the chances? You know, we're doing this interview and it's just raining outside. Like, that's crazy. What are the chances of that in California? Yeah. It rains like three days a year here, and this has happened to be once. I, you know, I'm going to think this is good luck. That's what this is. This is good luck. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So before we get into the show itself, let me explain the rules of these are questions. Chris, I'm going to ask you a series of questions that going to be based around your career and aspirations, along with a mixture of questions that are borderline idiotic and, well, randomly stupid. Do you accept those terms? I accept. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So, Chris, are you ready? Ready. Let's go. Let's go. Internet, are you ready? I got a guy. I got a guy over there. He's waving high, okay. so I'm going to take it as a yes. Take that okay. as a yes. All, All right. right. All right. Cool. With that, let's begin. So, Chris, for those who do not know, we've met previously before one time at a Blueprint Pro Wrestling show, a BPW show. Um, shout out to Jamil. He's the one who did the connection. I will put a picture on screen so that everyone knows who he is. He is the guy. He's the one who connected with us. Great guy. Awesome talent. What a handsome knew... man. Look at that. Okay. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, um, you know, during that show, I had my camera, and I was taking photos in ring um, and outside, and I was taking photos of you and while you were announcing. And when you were announcing matches, you know, we eventually meet up, and we made an instant connection. Um, I want to know more about your story on how you got into showbiz and became a massively successful interviewer and media personality. I've just always been really passionate about broadcasting. And I can take this back to when I was four years old at a Fisher Price tape recorder with like cassette tapes. And I would pretend that I was the radio DJs and the radio announcers that I heard on the radio. So I think that that's where it began. Mm -hmm. And I just always loved performing. I loved being in front of an audience and getting a reaction out of them. So it was plays when I was younger. Then it was hosting the talent show and the fashion show when I was in high school. I was the vice president of my student council, which meant I got to do the morning announcements. So that's where it began. Also in high school, I had a communication studies class where we learned all different aspects of how broadcasting worked from being in front of the camera to running a camera to mm -hmm. tapes and audio and VTR. So that's where it began. And when it came time to pick a college major, you're 17 years old, basically being asked, like, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? I was like, yeah, you know, that communication studies class was really fun. Let's see if I could do something with that. And that became my college major. And, you know, just kind of pressed on from there and realized I didn't want to be one of those people, Stephen, mm -hmm. who hated their job. I didn't want to be one of the people who couldn't enjoy Sunday because Monday was the next day and it meant they had to wake up and go to a job they didn't want to go to. So for me, it began with passion and it began with this love for like loving your job and this fear of being one of those people who did not enjoy their job. So that's kind of where it began for me. Okay, very cool. Um, I can relate to that in some ways because um, I had my first of many midlife crises when I was 15 uh, in high school when I had to realize what I need to do with my life. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know what I need to do. As kids are barely even thinking about that, I'm like, what I got to do with my life. Um, and uh, originally my three, my two passions were computer programming and pro wrestling. And I wanted to be a computer programmer, developing video games. And at one point I wanted to be a pro wrestler. I tried both of those avenues at different points in my life. Um, entertainment and media and doing stand-up comedy and acting were my third choice, uh, long story short. But I can relate to that where you're trying to figure out what you want to do next and where do you want to go. And uh, we can relate in some ways because I also have a communication studies major as well. So uh, 
I know the the love of doing broadcasting, the love of media, and just being, whether it be on camera, behind the scenes, or just everything in the process in between. So it's a one of a lifetime whirlwind of experience. So cool. Yeah, and I will say that don't feel like when you're 15 or 17 or 20 or even 25 or whatever age, 35, don't feel like you have to figure out the rest of your life at that age. Just follow the things that really juice you. Follow the things that really energize you and make you smile, the things that you're passionate about. And perhaps they could lead to something that you earn money from. But I, I always say, like, do the things in your life that you're passionate about every single day or do a little bit of if you love playing guitar pick up the guitar play a few minutes every single day if you love singing like sing a little bit i think it's important even if you don't end up making a career out of those things do the things in your life that you're passionate about because i just think that that's what really ends up driving you and those are the things you can lean into when other things in your life maybe aren't going your way very wise words absolutely agree with that and I think it's more fun when you're doing the things that you like doing at the end of the day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I would like for you in my next question to compare your first CVV interview um, you ever conducted to your latest interview as of this recording. And tell the viewers, what is the key difference between those two interviews? Boy, I think that if you're not looking back at your older stuff, whether it's six months ago, 16 years ago, or 16 years ago, and cringing a little bit because you're like, ooh, I said that or I did that, like then you're not moving in the right direction. So there's a big difference. There is a huge arbitrage between what I'm doing now and what I was doing when I started out. And I, I just think the biggest differences are I'm a little bit more self-aware as a broadcaster. Mm -hmm. I think it takes a few years to figure out who you are as a broadcaster. And you always hear like, oh, just be yourself. Well, the thing is, you don't know how to be yourself on camera. Right. And in reality, the only self you're really seeing is in the mirror. And you're just seeing that when you're, you know, maybe getting ready or you've just finished a shower, you're brushing your teeth or whatever. And I don't think that you're seeing yourself in your every single, you know, like in your in your daily life. And you watch back your stuff the first, you know, year or two, and you go, "Huh, do I really sound like that?" Yes, you really sound like that. Everybody in the world hears you like that. I know it doesn't sound like that to you, but yeah, like when you hear your voice in the answering machine, you're like, "Oh, geez, I really sound like that." Yeah. And then also, do I really look like that? Do I really do that thing with my eyebrows or my hands or whatever it happens to be? Uh huh. Yeah, you do. And I think it's just getting comfortable is the biggest thing between who I am now and who I was when I first started out. And, and it's a matter of getting comfortable with who you are and then kind of growing from there. And I also think the biggest thing is listening. I think it's, a, it's very difficult when you're starting out to be present in the moment and actually listening to what your interview subject is saying rather than trying to figure out oh my god what was the next question i was going to ask i can't even remember what it was and then you're you know you're you're not in the moment so it's kind of trying to be more present in the moment and listening the great larry king said i never learned anything by talking and i always remember that when i'm in an interview that the more that your mouth is moving the less that you're learning from the person that you're talking to mm -hmm. that's a great quote from him and, uh, you know, I never say I'm a professional interviewer by any stress of the imagination. I'm just a guy who asks weird and bizarre questions that, from time to time. But the one thing I've learned from doing over 30 episodes of this show so far um, is, is just that, like, it's not you as the interviewer. It's your guests and learning their story and where they came from and understanding their perspective. Yeah, and it's shining a light on them. I'm yeah. fully aware that nobody's coming to my interviews because they want to see me. And I realized that really early on, that I'm not the star of the show. In fact, that's why I changed the name of my podcast. Yeah. It was originally The Chris Van Vliet Show. Now it's Insight with Chris Van Vliet. And I realized that I wasn't the focus. It was never about me. It was always shining a light on my guests and their incredible stories to get to where they are now. So... I think that that's a really big thing to realize is this is not about you. And I would say as a general percentage, it should probably be you talking 20% of the time and then your guests 
talking the rest of the time. Yes. That's a for those that want to do future interviews, like want to go into that broadcasting field, that's a good rule of thumb. So Yeah, when I look at like the timeline when I'm editing, yeah. it's like a little blip for me and then a whole bunch of audio for them and a little blip and then a whole bunch of audio. I'm like, yeah, that's that's probably and if you look back at my older interviews, probably wasn't so much like that. <laughs> fair, fair enough. But it's good. You're growing and you're developing and you're still growing, always. still developing. Always, always. Always, yeah. And, you know, um, in this ep- this show, it's all about you. That's what I'm highlighting today for this episode of These Are Questions. And it leads to my next question. And it's an important question. Um, Wawa coffee or Tim Hortons coffee? <laughs> well, believe it or not, I'm not a coffee drinker. Okay. I can't imagine me with more energy. But, of course, I'm going to have to pick Tim Hortons. And in Canada, they refer to it as Timmy's or Timmy Ho's. And, like, they're putting something in there. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But they're putting something in that coffee because people like my mom or my sister, they're getting, like, two, three cups of Timmy Ho's a day. So I think if you were to ask any Canadian, Tim Hortons or literally anything else, the answer is going to be Tim Hortons. Good, good answer. You know what they put in their coffee? It's, it's the, it's the spirit of Canada. That's what gives them the extra energy. <laughs> that just, must be it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or some sort of, I don't know. Maybe it's some like raw maple syrup or something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Goes to my next question. Um, Chris, can you do Liu Kang's bicycle kick from Mortal Kombat? Liu <laughs> Kang. Oh, so Mortal Kombat is. One of, if not my favorite video games, and I would always play it on Genesis instead of playing it on Super Nintendo because, if you recall, on Super Nintendo they didn't have the blood. You yep. hit someone and the sweat would come out of them. Remember, it was or it was clear blood, but it looked like sweat. Yeah. So I would always play it on Sega Genesis because they had the blood. So Liu Kang was probably my number two guy. Because mm-hmm. not only did he have the bicycle kick, which I believe was just holding down low kick for three seconds, That's and then right. you let go and he would do it. But Scorpion was my guy. I'm sure Scorpion was a lot of people who was watching this. I'm sure it was their favorite person as well. Because Backpack B was the, get over here! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, rem- I remember it pretty well. And the thing is, I didn't grow up with a Genesis. I was a Nintendo, uh, I guess, player. And... Um, wasn't until later on, until recently, they just released like their classic system and like their mini version of it, yeah. and it had, it had the original MK1 and 2 on it, so I was able to play it on the Genesis version, and I gotta say, it was pretty good, like, it was pretty fun to play. Um, no complaints on there. It's one of my favorite games and favorite series of all time as well, so. Sega Genesis was the first gaming console I ever owned, and I, that, I didn't get it till I was 16, Oh, wow. My parents were like, we are not buying you a gaming system. We want you to be outside. We want you to be reading books. And look, I did a lot of things outside. Played baseball in the summers and played hockey in the winter. But I understand where my parents are coming from. So I finally saved up enough money when I was 16 to buy a Sega Genesis off my friend Matt. And it came with Mortal Kombat 3. And I became very good at Mortal Kombat 3 as a result. Okay. okay. Shout out to Matt. Hey, hooking you up there. That's cool. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Yeah, yeah. And it's a great fun series. For me, my first console ever was N64, but I'm a collector in itself, and I was able to collect all the classic ones, and now I have right. a Genesis, so it's pretty cool. Um, pretty dope. Shout out to Mortal Kombat. Shout out to your friend Matt. Shout out to everybody here <laughs> on These Are Questions. <laughs> Shout out to Steven. Yes. Get over here. Shout out. <laughs> Freeze! Freeze. Oh, I don't even know if that's a thing. I was—I I, I don't know if I was mixing um, Mister Freeze and Sub Zero there together. I was about—I was about to say we can't afford Batman on this show. <laughs> we can't <laughs> afford Mister Freeze. <laughs> Sorry, Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> My next question, Chris, is if the CFL, the C- Canadian Football League, the NFL, the National Football League, and the XFL, the um, I, extreme I, football league. They did. They, that's been disproven. It's not the extreme oh. football league. We we don't know what the X in the XFL is. Maybe the people in the comments might know. I don't know. But if all of those leagues join together to make a f- new football league, what would the league name be called, and what would the first team name be called? Oh my goodness! And uh, which rules would we play by? Because 
the, the CFL, for everybody who's unaware, has a very different set of rules than the NFL. Three downs, the field mm-hmm. is 110 yards, yep. the goalposts are at the front of the end zone. So I don't, man, my goodness, it would be the, it would we would call it the Mixed Rules Football League. The MRFL is what we would call this. And the first team would, of course, be the Toronto Towers. And uh-huh. I would be I would be the owner and also somehow the general manager of the Toronto Towers. Okay, okay, I could see that. That's you know that's going to happen. That's your that's your next career endeavor. Uh, after you, after your after you keep you gotta keep doing interviews, but as your side project, you're gonna be the general manager. You're gonna create this yeah. new new revolutionary football league. The mixed rules football league, and since there's three downs in the uh, CFL and four downs in the XFL and the NFL, the Mixed Rules Football League would have 3.75 downs to kind of even it out of the mean average of these three. <laughs> I don't know how that would work. I don't know how a third of a, three quarters of a down would work, but maybe, somehow they could. Maybe like you get in halves, like you have half, not half timeouts, but like, I don't know, like you have half the time to do your next play or something. That's the, we, we'll work out the kinks. We'll work out the kinks later. We just wanted the name and, and the team name. That's all That's all we need. That's all we need. Yeah, that's it. I, I, I don't know why the Toronto Towers, other than the CN Tower, but sure. You know, I'm always, I've always been a fan of team names that actually sound aggressive and sound ferocious. Yeah. And the Toronto Towers does not fall into that category, but I'm going to go with it anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because they are gonna ta- they're going to tower over everybody else. That's it. That's it. There you go. That's the marketing right there. The mascot yeah. is just a giant tower with the Toronto uh, logo. Yeah, it's it's the CN Tower that has eyes and hands and like really big legs because it's going to be stomping as it's towering over everybody. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's the, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that. That's it. That's it. That's it. Forget it. That's it. That's the end of our show. We got the answer right there. That's it. We're that's done. it. The Toronto that's Towers. It. And alliteration <laughs> is always good. Mm-hmm. I, you can never go wrong with alliteration. You can never go wrong with it. Not at all. So, Chris, I have a Deco Drive question to ask you. And only so many people will know Deco Drive because it's more of a local regional. They're national, too. But, you know, it's more in the Florida area, South Florida area. Um, But I wanted to ask you, what was the funniest segment you were in on that show? It's so hard to narrow it down to just one. So Deco drives a nightly entertainment show on the Fox affiliate in South Florida and Miami for everybody who's watching and is unaware or lives somewhere, somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And the show has been on the air for 25 years, which is insane to think that they've been on Monday to Friday for the last 25 years. And I was afforded so many incredible opportunities to interview some of the biggest stars in the world, to travel the planet and to do some really fun things like, swim with alligators or catch a 480 pound goliath grouper but man to narrow it down to the funniest moment i think it's actually a lot of stuff you didn't see on camera i worked with shireen sandoval and lynn martinez who still hosts the show and there were so many just funny things behind the scenes where they'd be counting us down 10 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and lynn would be making faces or telling a joke or shireen would be like doing the same or like telling you a story and like rushing to end the story. And then you're coming back on camera and you're all of a sudden like laughing for no reason. And the audience has no idea what's going on here. So I think it's the moments that you didn't see. And it's just such a great family from the editors to the camera operators, to the producers, to the directors, to the audio people, to everyone who puts that show together. That was such an amazing, amazing family. And, I loved my time there. I'm glad. I'm glad you had a great experience there with Deco Drive. Um, I never was, well, excuse me. I never was super featured there, but I did appear on Deco Drive one time in a random episode in 2013. I had the edit, excuse me, the camera operator did an interview question with me asking about Justin Bieber and asking about the time where he, I think he threw eggs at his house or he was getting eggs thrown at his place. And he asked me, what was my opinion on that? And I said, sure, he can make eggs. He could do an omelet, you know, with it. Uh, <laughs> he, he could do something with it. I don't know. 
Um, it was it got on for two seconds. It's it's it, it's lost media unless you go into the archives in Channel 7's <laughs> news library. But uh, I did appear on it one time, so I can relate in that sense. And it's such a cool show. It's a fun show. And uh, I remember seeing you watching it as a viewer, and I was just like, I get to see Chris doing amazing things on the show. So I was like, it must be so fun to do. Dude, that's so cool that you were on it. And yes, I can guarantee you. That is somewhere in the archives in the massive tape library that they have there. Mm -hmm. It was 2013. It's it's a random episode in 2013. Um, it's somewhere there, and I know I got IMDb credit for it, so it's it's legit in that sense. <laughs> um, hey, look at you. Okay, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying a little bit, a little bit at a time. Um, but that's awesome. I'm glad you had a wonderful experience working with um, with the station there and working with Deco Drive. Um, my next question is. Would you rather take a thousand and four chops by Tyler Breeze or take a thousand and four trips around the moon? Oh my gosh. Well, look, if anybody's seen that segment where I went to Flatbacks, which is Tyler Breeze and Sean Spears Wrestling School in Central Florida, you know, they chopped me. Yes. They chopped me and their students chopped me 20 chops. A viral video. You can check it out on my YouTube channel. Tyler Breeze's chop was very hard, very loud very painful i don't know if i'd want to take even one more of those let alone a thousand and four of those that all in one i would be not only a space traveler but also a world record holder so i'm going to go with the thousand and four trips around the moon okay okay good answer i think that'll be a safe i think that'll be a safer safer bet safer trip than the thousand and four chops by tyler breeze i can i can imagine both are that. very dangerous both <laughs> are very dangerous but i will hedge my bets and say that traveling to space is far safer okay there you go. There you go. You heard it here on These Are Questions. <laughs> so, as you mentioned before, you've met a plethora of celebrities, entertainment personalities, and media heads. With all the successes you've had in your career so far, where do you want to take CVV into, into the future? Oh, such a great question. And for me, my definition of success has always been being excited for what you're going to do that day, and then at the end of the day, being proud of what you've accomplished. So for me, I just want more. You know, I've, I've had a, a pretty fun career thus far, but truly feel like we're just getting started. So and this is always an interesting time of the year as we kind of wrap up one year and head into a new year, and it's kind of a good time to reset and set new goals. And I love doing that, but I also love setting goals for the day and the week and the months, and also the years. So I think it can just be summed up by more. I just want to do more. I want to meet more people. I want to connect with more people. I just want to do more. I want to travel to more places. I want to interview more people. I want to have more downloads. I want to have more viewers. More, more, more. And I hope that doesn't sound like I'm being greedy. I just want more. Wow. It's it's that it's the drive and hunger to keep pursuing new things, new opportunities, new experiences, and live the fulfilling life that you want to go for. Yeah, and it's it's how can I get more out of every situation too? Of course, of course, absolutely. I don't think there's no no shame in saying in that. I think that that just shows the drive and hunger that you're willing to put through as you're going through your career endeavors. So nothing wrong with that. I'm down. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, for the new year, new opportunities, new beginnings, new experiences, we're manifesting into it. So it's going to happen. More. Mm -hmm. More. Give me more. Um, and it, it, it's, it's, it's funny because, you know, you give great pieces of motivational advice throughout your episodes and throughout your social media posts. And, you know, one piece of advice that sticks out for me is vague goals give vague results. And, you know, I wanted to ask you, what was the one piece of advice that you've given to your audience and to your viewers that truly resonates with you? I think the way that we end our episodes now, I think is something that I hope really resonates with the audience. So I, I end every interview asking my guests what are three things they're grateful for. And gratitude has been a practice in my life for quite some time now. I wake up every single day, I say out loud three things that I'm grateful for. And then before I go to sleep, again, say out loud three things that I'm grateful for. And I think that if you can focus on the things in your life that are positive, like it's so easy, right? We've got good and bad things going on all the time in our lives. But if you can focus on the positive things rather than focusing on the negative things or the things that you don't have, I think that your life starts to manifest and the universe starts to manifest more positive things. 
in your life. So when we started asking that at the end of every interview, of all of our guests, whether they're an actor, a wrestler, an athlete, an astrophysicist, an FBI negotiator, what are the three things in your life that you're grateful for? Mm-hmm. I think it makes people realize, oh, I could be grateful for those things too. Like I, I have great things going on in my life too. Maybe today wasn't the best day, or maybe this wasn't the best week, but there's a lot of great things in my life that I can focus on. So I hope that that is it. And just the idea of be great, be grateful. If you can be grateful, you will live a great life. Now, we're tailing the end of our interview here on These Are Questions, and I just have one more question to ask you. And this is a question that I've been asking every single guest that is going to be featured here on These Are Questions Season 3. And the question is, is that I'm making a playlist, a music playlist, this season on These Are Questions. And I've been asking every guest to tell me, and you can give me up to five as the max, can you tell me some of your favorite songs that define your personality? (laughs) Since it is the holiday season, I am going to list off the greatest Christmas song of all time, which is NSYNC's Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Put that right at the top of the playlist, Stephen. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Ooh yeah, I love that. Ooh yeah. So it's even gonna be. be- would... It's even gonna. Sorry, I mean to cut off, but I'm gonna say it's even gonna be better because episodes are coming out after Christmas. It's even gonna be better. Oh, it's gonna do, yeah. No, well, it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be perfect. Perfect. It's, it's gonna, gonna be perfect. Gonna be early. It's gonna be early. We're gonna be getting people into the Christmas spirit early. That's what we're gonna be doing with that. I I have a. <laughs> guilty love a guilty pleasure of lfo remember lfo the boy band in the late 90s and that song summer girls that has defined my life and i know every single word to that song so put summer girls by lfo you know may devin and rich two of their members rest in peace which is you know still mind-boggling to me but put that song in there for me and that's that's two that's two. Blink one eighty Blink one eighty two shaped who I am and who I was growing up. And that was very much the soundtrack to a lot of my youth. So let's put on What's My Age Again as one of the songs on there. That is a that is a timeless song. And I think that everybody on the face of the planet knows that song. And I also think that's one of those songs that when you play it, people will remember a time or a place. Maybe it was the first time they heard it, but they will remember a time and a place. So that's a, that's definitely on there. Okay, you got three, you got I two think, more left. Well, music's so interesting because it does evoke a, a, a feeling, whether that's a feeling of joy or sadness or nostalgia. I think that it's so interesting how a sound can be linked to a feeling. So I'm also going to go with Disturbed. We're going to go with Stupefy by Disturbed because back when I first started working out in high school, I had three of my buddies that were, we were all working out together in the high school gym. And this is before like you had MP3 players before iPhones and anything like that. So we had a CD and I had a burned CD. Sorry, Disturbed. I had a burned CD of Disturbed's album and we put it on and song three, was stupefied also you know was definitely a defining song for that time if you were a wrestling fan mm-hmm. we talked about wrestling a little bit earlier so we're gonna go with that and disturbed also sang stone cold steve austin's entrance theme so that's right that's right I, yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go with that and then i'm gonna go with let's go with a little country look i my my music taste if you couldn't tell kind of runs the gamut from pop punk to rock rock to hip-hop to everything in between so we're gonna put a little country in here with tim mcgraw and we're gonna go live like you were dying because i think the message of that song is so powerful you know he went skydiving he went rocky mountain climbing he went 2.7 seconds on a bull named Fu manchu and i just think it's the idea of like you should live each day as if you're not gonna see tomorrow because you know, it's not guaranteed for all of us and tomorrow isn't promised I like is it. that four or is that five? That is five. You got five. There we go. That's your five. And then That's I'm gonna th- I'm gonna throw a I'm gonna throw an honorable mention here 
Uh, and I, I just put on Dr. Dre's Chronic 2001 the other day, and literally every song on that album is amazing. And that that is such a defining hip hop album for that time. And you know, huge comeback for Dr. Dre. It, it helped to put Eminem on the map. So we're gonna go with that entire album. Okay. Shout, shout out to Dr. Dre and shout out to all your song choices here. You definitely went through the spectrum here. And as this playlist keeps going, it just gets more and more into the monstrosity of all the different genres of music that's included in this crazy playlist. That was very eclectic. I hope that people are okay with that. They will. They're going to be. They have to be. They will be. Hi, everyone. I hope you're enjoying this These Are Questions episode. As you've followed this season, we are at the last episode for These Are Questions Season 3. And with that, throughout this season, I have asked every single guest to tell me some, and up to five, some of their favorite songs that define their personalities. And I'm pleased to reveal to you all the These Are Questions Season 3 music playlist. It's available now to listen here on Spotify. On top of everyone's picks for the songs that they chose that define their music personalities, I have also added my top five favorite songs that define my personality. And first and foremost, I'm going to go off with Audio Slaves, Doesn't Remind Me. Then I go off with my favorite Linkin Park song, Faint by Linkin Park. Then I go into one of my favorite songs that I constantly listen to all the time, What If by The Plain White Tees. Then I go with ACDC's TNT because, you know, I'm dynamite. And last and not certainly least, my all-time favorite song. This is the song that will go with me for the rest of my life. And that song is Jimi Hendrix's Voodoo Child. And there you go. Those are my top five favorite songs that define my personality. And I hope you have a chance to listen to everyone's favorite songs that define their personalities. So please take a listen to it. Hope you enjoy it. And now let's get on to the remaining minutes of the last episode of These Are Questions Season 3. With that, we are at the end of our These Are Questions Season 3 interview. Before I give you the floor to say whatever you would like in any last words, I just want to take this moment to say that I've been able to do over 30 episodes of These Are Questions, and I've gotten to interview a variety of different guests from all walks of life and all different, dec- oh, excuse me, I almost botched that up, botchermania, all different careers, keeping that in, all different careers. Um, it's nothing short of amazing that I was able to do this from a guy that's just been interviewing just out of the blue and also just interviewing through the internet, through online, through technology. It's nothing short of amazing. But the fact that I got the chance to interview you is just a career highlight for me because of how amazing that you are as a professional interviewer. And the fact that this little random crazy show was able to do that is just nothing short of amazing. So I just want to say thank you for being a part. And thank you to every single guest that made these are questions what it is. Well, thank you. Thank you, Stephen, for the invitation. Thank you for having the greatest hair on the Internet. Yeah, that's oh right. Look at it. Look at this. Appreciate that. <laughs> um, appreciate it. If you have any last words, any final thoughts, anything you want to say to the audience that are watching or listening here on These Are Questions, the internet is yours. Well, I just want to say that you are living proof, Stephen, that if you want to do something, we now live in a time where it's completely possible for anybody to do anything. We have a supercomputer in our pocket at all points in time that shoots HD video and shoots high quality audio or records high quality audio. If there's something that you want to do, go after it, make it happen and stop waiting for it to just come to you. Because let me tell you something, it's not just going to show up in your doorstep and you're going to go, oh, here's that thing I always want to do. If there's something you want to do, chase after it, make it happen. And you've made that happen. So congrats to you. Thank you. I I appreciate that. That's very nice of you. Um, To many more, to more and more as we continue on into our perspective journeys and career endeavors. So can't wait to what to see is going to happen in the future. And congrats on season three. And here's to 30 more episodes and 330 more episodes. 
<laughs> maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe. Hopefully. Hopefully. We'll see. But yes, to more. To more. To more. Yes.